In order to explain aromaticity, I'm going to show you how to easily identify aromatic compounds, and then I'll discern the difference between aromatic, anti-aromatic, and non-aromatic compounds. But first, let's talk about aromatic compounds. Aromatic compounds must be cyclic, meaning they form ring structures. They must be planar, meaning flat, no wedges or dashes, or three dimension. And they must be conjugated, meaning they have alternating single bonds with pi electrons. And finally, they must have 4n plus 2 pi electrons total. Aromatic structures are cyclic, meaning they form ring structures, or polyring structures, or hetero ring structures with other atoms in the ring, or ring structures with substituents, and even ring structures with charges. Aromatic compounds are planar, meaning they're flat. They don't have wedges or dashes or any three dimension. Aromatic compounds are conjugated, meaning they have alternating single bonds with pi electrons. In this example, single bonds alternate with double bonds, whereby the double bonded electrons are the pi electrons. To easily determine whether something is conjugated, you should be able to say double single, double single, double single without saying single single or double double while going around the ring. Double single, double single, double single. In this heterocyclic example, oxygen has two lone pairs one of which can be used as pi electrons to complete conjugation. So we have alternating double and single bonds with the lone pair on the oxygen. But to make it easy, just call the lone pair double and go around the ring to see if you have double, single, double, single, double, single. Here's an example of a planar cyclic with negative charges. A negative charge indicates an extra pair of electrons which means negative charges are pi electrons. So we do have alternating double and single bonds with negative charges. And to make it easy, just call the negative charges double and see if we have double, single, double, single, double, single, double, single, double, single. Now we have an example of a planar cyclic with a positive charge. A positive charge indicates a missing pair of electrons, which is essentially a vacancy for a pair of pi electrons, meaning we do consider positive charges to complete conjugation. So just like with negative charges, call the positive charges double and see if we have double, single, double, single, double, single, double, single. And finally, aromatic compounds follow Huckel's rule, which means they have 4n plus 2 pi electrons total, where n is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and on and on. But you don't have to memorize this formula in order to identify aromatic compounds. Just know that they'll have 2, 6, 10, 14, 18, and on and on, adding 4 each time, total pi electrons, which includes double bonded electrons or lone pairs. So here's an easy way to remember these numbers. You might know them as the SPDF numbers. Where the S subshell can contain a total of two electrons, the P subshell can contain a total of six electrons, the D subshell can contain a total of 10 electrons, F14, G18, and so on. And when the subshells are fully filled, we have what's called stable octets. The fact that aromatic compounds are conjugated allows pi electrons to move from bond to bond to bond, giving them resonance stability. And the fact that they have pi electrons to fulfill stable octets gives them fully filled subshell stability. And together, resonance stability and fully filled stability make all resonance forms of aromatic compounds exceptionally stable. Now let's look at some examples of aromatic compounds. Here we have a polycyclic molecule. It's planar. It's conjugated. Double, single, double, single, double, single, double, single, double, single. And it contains two, four, six, eight, ten pi electrons. It's aromatic. Here's a heterocyclic example. It's planar. It's conjugated. Double, single, double, single, double, single and it has two, four, six pi electrons. It's aromatic.
Now you might be wondering why I didn't count the lone pair on the bottom nitrogen. Well, that nitrogen is already conjugated with a single and a double bond on either side. So that lone pair was not necessary to complete conjugation, so we don't count it. I did count the lone pair on the nitrogen on the top because that nitrogen is surrounded by two single bonds, which would give us an instance of single-single, making it not conjugated. Here's another planar heterocyclic molecule, and the sulfur has two lone pairs, but only one of which we have to count to complete conjugation, giving us double, single, double, single, double, single and it has two, four, six pi electrons. It's aromatic. Here's another example with a nitrogen with a negative charge. And remember, the negative charge is an extra lone pair that can be counted to complete conjugation. So we have double, single, double, single, double, single, double, single, double, single, and it has two, four, six, eight, ten pi electrons. It's aromatic. How about an example with a positive charge? Because the carbon with a positive charge is not conjugated, meaning it's surrounded by two single bonds, we'll have to count it for conjugation, giving us double, single, double, single, double, single, double, single. And it has two, four, six pi electrons. It's aromatic. Here's another positively charged cyclic molecule. It's conjugated, and it has a positive charge on the oxygen. However, we don't have to count the positive charge to complete conjugation because the oxygen is already conjugated with a double and a single bond on either side of it. We have double, single, double, single, double, single, and two, four, six pi electrons. It's aromatic. Here's an example of a cyclic planar conjugated molecule that has two, four, six, eight pi electrons, which is not one of the SPDF numbers, meaning it's not aromatic. Instead, it's anti-aromatic. Yet another example of a cyclic planar and conjugated molecule with two, four, six, eight pi electrons, which again is not one of the SPDF numbers, so it's not aromatic, it's anti-aromatic. Here's another example of a cyclic planar conjugated molecule with a negative charge on a carbon with two, four pi electrons, which is not one of the SPDF numbers, so it's not aromatic. Instead, it's anti-aromatic. Anti-aromatic compounds are cyclic, planar, and conjugated, but they don't have 2, 6, 10, 14, and so on pi electrons, meaning they don't follow Hugel's rule, so they're anti-aromatic. So what are non-aromatic compounds? Well, non-aromatic compounds are not cyclic, or they're not planar, or they're not conjugated, or none of the above. So it doesn't even matter how many pi electrons they have, they're non-aromatic. They're just any other compound. Determine whether this molecule is aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic. Pause now if you have to. It's cyclic, planar, and conjugated, but it has eight pi electrons, making it anti-aromatic. Aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic? Pause now if you have to. It's cyclic, planar, and conjugated with that positive charge, with six pi electrons, making it aromatic. How about this molecule? Pause if you have to. It's cyclic, planar, and conjugated with that positive charge with two pi electrons, making it aromatic. Try this one. Pause if you have to. It's cyclic and planar, but it's not conjugated with two single bonds in a row on each side, making it non-aromatic. Aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic? Pause now if you have to. It's cyclic, planar, and conjugated with that lone pair, with 10 pi electrons, making it aromatic. How about this molecule? Pause now if you have to. 
It's cyclic, planar, and conjugated, but it has 16 pi electrons, making it anti-aromatic. What about this molecule? Pause if you have to. It's easy to see that this one's not even cyclic, making this non-aromatic. And one more, aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic? Pause if you have to. It's cyclic, planar, and conjugated with the two negative charges and has six pi electrons, making it aromatic. Simple as that. I hope this video helps you in organic chem class or on the DAT or the MCAT. Thank you for watching.